Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today we're going to be checking out the Nano PC T4 from Friendly Arm. So let's get started. So as you can see from the screen behind me, it's actually running a Quake 2 demo on its own hardware, graphic card, OpenGL and all, and it's running pretty smooth at that. So let's talk about the specs a little on this guy. It's got a Rock 3399, which is a hexa-core with the big little system in there where you have two cores that are faster clocked at 1.8 and the four cores that are smaller, which is clocked at 1.5. It's got four gigs of RAM and 16 gigabyte EMMC. As far as the bottom, you have the 12 volt barrel connector, which I tried putting in five and it still booted up. You got the one gigabit ethernet, USB 3.0, the 3.5 millimeter audio jack and a mic, HDMI, which supports 4K at 60 frames, then two USB 2.0s. On the right, you got the ribbon display or the E display and also a touchscreen interface that you could plug into that. You got the fan connector, also the boot and recovery buttons. On the opposite side of that, you got two camera inputs, four pin serial, USB-C, and then the reset button. On the top, you have the reset button, the Wi-Fi connectors, SD card, then the 40 pin Raspberry Pi GPIO. On the underside where this guy really shines is M.2 expansion port, which also supports PCIe X4 lanes, which is great if you're gonna expand this with other hardware. Then you also have infrared on this. So if you wanted to turn this into a media station thing, you can. Now this guy supports multiple operating systems. It does have Linux and Android built in. That's one thing I really like about the Rock chip. You can install Android 7.1 and 8.1 on this guy. Only on the eMMC though, you can't use the SD card to boot. Now I got to play around with this guy for about a week and I gotta say it's very responsive. That's probably because of the eMMC and I'm used to playing with like Raspberry Pi and SD card but it's very responsive. With four gigs of RAM, it does help a lot when you're doing multitasking on this. And you could use dual monitor. You could HDMI and a display port from the USB-C. Now, as far as the heatsink goes, it does come with a heatsink, but I don't really recommend using it. You could say uh, it does actually much better without the heatsink. It's able to stay at higher clocks without the thermal throttling. But once I put the heatsink on, it thermal throttles like crazy. Unless you have a fan on it, I don't really recommend using the heatsink on this guy. It's too small. As far as the footprint, this is about the same size as a Raspberry Pi. It's a little bit bigger, but this is one of the smallest boards that uses the Rock 3399. So you might want to take that in for account. Now, I know the question you guys are going to be asking me, what can you do with this expansion board? Yes, you could definitely put in a M.2 and you could also put in multiple expansion cards like this SATA card that you could put on the bottom or you could convert it into a PCIe 4X and then actually slap in, I don't know, a bigger SATA controller or possibly a graphic card. Now, currently I spoke with them briefly about installing a graphic card and it's not really geared towards that. It's more geared for expansion. So if you guys want to check out how to get this working with a graphic card, you're probably going to have to compile your own kernel because it's not in there. To be honest, where this guy really shines is the Linux distro where you could actually play with all this expansion boards. And honestly, I would this would be a really good NAS server. Uh, you could stick in a SATA PCIe expansion card plug in four hard drives and this thing would just work. According to their site and on Amazon, this sports about $109. I'll leave a link in the description to that. Uh, it is a little bit pricey, but you do get that expansion slot that a lot of other boards don't have. And depending on what your use for it is. I mean, if you're gonna be using this just for the GPIO pins, doing light projects with like little screens and stuff like that, I still recommend getting the Raspberry Pi because it's a cheaper alternative. But if you wanna build a serious NAS, like something that you want to put a SATA controller on here or a RAID controller or something like that and hook up four hard drives, this is the way to go. You, you definitely have a lot of room for improvement and you can make it really fast. I didn't run into any prob uh, stability problems running their Linux operating system, which is really good. And I also briefly ran the Armbian, which was really pretty stable as well. So you might want to take into look at those alternatives. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you guys had any questions about this guy, hit me up in the comments below. Also, if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And I all know you guys were waiting for the giveaway, which obviously I'm going to put at the end, seriously. So hang out for that. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts. So what I did was use this website that actually goes through all our comments and then finds out all the duplicates and everything and removes those. And then it'll pick a winner from there. And then the winner of the Nano Pi PC T4 is... David Maxwell. So hit me up on my email. It's in the about uh, novaspirit at novaspirit.com uh, and then we'll figure out all the details from there.